Act now and get this amazing Fantasy 15 Pete's Basement mashup tee with exclusive artwork by Rick Sellis. Teespring.com slash Pete's Basement. Get $5 off your order with the code VIDEO. Hurry, sale ends April 9th. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the basement. It's me, the big guy, Barbara, and the clown prince of crime over here. It's been a pretty volatile week in comics. Yes. You know, a lot of people yelling at each other back and forth on uh, Pete's Basement Facebook. Not so much on the Instagram. Everybody was kind of in accordance yeah. on Instagram. Uh, if, you've, if you've had your head in the sand, this was the cover by Raphael Albuquerque. Not to be confused with the, the area in cover. New Mexico. It was a variant cover for what's going to be called Joker Month coming in June. Back row 41. Basically, this is the 75th anniversary of the Joker. This was one of the variant covers for Batgirl number 41, and everyone lost their minds. No, I, th- I think a small amount of people lost their minds. A small, but they just had big mouths. Way too big. And basically, DC caved. Raphael Albuquerque said, I don't want my cover being used if it's going to upset people. <laughs> so they canceled the cover. I took it upon myself to print out a very large poster of it to tell anybody that is offended by this to go fuck yourselves. It is a great piece of art. And as far as it being canceled, okay. See, you're getting mixed stories, and this is a problem. For those people who it was, they say it was canceled because it was offensive and it glorified rape and violence against women, you guys are all assholes. Every fucking one of you is. It does not glorify rape. It does not symbolize really violence against women. It's the fucking Joker at his utmost creepiest. This is a creepy ass cover. This will give you nightmares. Look at the look on poor Barbara's face. I think it was really the tear that yeah. upset people. It brings to mind one of the most violent episodes in Batman history, without a doubt, Mm -hmm. where Barbara Gordon was attacked by the Joker, shot in the spine and crippled, and also stripped naked and taken pictures of, Mm -hmm. all to torment her father. So if you want to cry sexism about anything, how about that? This wasn't even to fuck with Barbara. It was to fuck with her dad. She was a secondary character in his torment. So there's something sexist for you assholes. Anyway, it is alluded to in Alan Moore's The Killing Joke that she was also raped afterward. That has never been confirmed, not even by Alan Moore himself, Mm -hmm. not even by Grant Morrison, who basically said at the end of The Killing Joke that Batman killed the Joker Obviously, we know that didn't happen because since the killing joke has become canon in bad history and the Joker is still around. Yeah. So people saw this cover and they went up in arms because, oh, it's all about rape and this and that. I don't agree. I think it's a phenomenal piece of artwork and I don't think DC should have canceled it. However, when you consider the tone of the book, now this is something else entirely. All of a sudden, DC flipped the script on Batgirl fans and made her a teenager. Yeah. Out of the blue. Because when Gail Simone was writing her, when this series first started in the New 52, she was not a teenager. She was mid-20s. She certainly wasn't drawn as a teenager. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, okay, if the publisher wants mm-hmm. to attract younger readers, the future of the comics industry and all... The, the way the Ms. Marvel bite. route. Fine, yeah. yeah. I get it. Fine. There's nothing we can do. We'll bite. There's not. What say do we have in the matter? We just, we're just we fans and mm-hmm. we're either going to read it or we're not going to read it. I preferred the Gail Simone series Mm -hmm. over the new one, but you want to attract new readers, it is what it is. It was sudden. Mm -hmm. It was unexplained. It just was at that point. So that being the case, the idea of the Joker doing what he did to a girl who's now a teenager is exponentially more heinous than what he did to the Barbara Gordon of the old 52. So I get that part. I do. Okay, yeah. I am the first one to say, especially when it comes to these who is in pop music, 
What the fuck are these kids listening to? I remember my friend's 11-year-old cousin listening to some fucking little hua singing about what her pussy tastes like. I wish I was making that up. I do not know what song it is. I do not know the artist. I don't care to know. I hope she probably gets fucking twat cancer just on account of because. I know cancer's horrible. This is someone who really doesn't need to live as far as I'm concerned. But that's neither here nor there. So I'm the first one to say, think of the kids, you know? And you don't want kids being subjected to an image like that, a violent image, and maybe they go back and they look at the killing joke, which is approved by the comics code, though. So it could go either way. But I, all right, I get it. You, you don't want to traumatize the kids yeah. or whatever. Fine. What bugged me about it, though, what really bugged me was Cameron Stewart, the current writer of Batgirl, was like, Oh, I, I told them I didn't want the cover on it because it didn't fit the tone of the book. It had nothing to do with the story. And I was like, all right, I get it. I've looked at a variant cover on many an occasion where that had nothing to do with the story. Mm -hmm. Nothing at all. And I'm like, where did that come from? Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, you know what? That, that's, I guess, a good reason. Then I found out it's Joker month. N no variant cover in Joker month is going to have anything to do with the story. No, yeah. You want to tell me what Superman's Joker cover is going to have to do with his story? Or fucking The Flash? So that was a cop-out. Yeah. And the fact that they're not admitting it's a fucking cop-out. The fact that he, to me, he threw Raphael Albuquerque under the fucking bus and says, look, it's a, it's a great piece of art, but I don't want it on my book. That's fucked up. To me, that's an insult to him, to artists everywhere. To their freedom of fucking expression. And I, when you are dictated to by a small minority of motherfuckers who don't even read the book, and they tell you this is no good, and you're like, all right, shut up, shut up, I'll do it, whatever, just shut the fuck up. I get it, you don't want to hear that bullshit no more, but you are creating a precedence. And that's not good. You are censoring art. So, okay, this piece bothered people because it was on a cover about a teenage girl, a book about a teenage girl. Fine. You don't want it on there. Fine. Take it off. But would you get the same bullshit if it was a cover of a Batman book? What if they reprinted The Killing Joke and put that on there? There's still going to be that same level of fucking uproar. And that's what I can't get behind. Mm -hmm. That's why I can't get behind canceling this cover. And only for that reason. If DC wants to turn around and say, hey, you know what, man? In hindsight... We thought this cover might have been a little too crazy for teenagers, for young kids that we're targeting as the demographic of this book. I would say, fine, you know what? You got a point. Yeah. Maybe it is a little extreme for kids. You cancel the book. Okay, good. You, you guys did good. It was, a, it was a moral and social decision. But the fact that they're making it like, oh, well, the, the artist didn't want it on the book because it didn't have anything to do with the tone of the book and this and that. It's a fucking cop-out. Right, right. That's all it is. The artist, and I'm sure the writer too, he didn't explain himself right, but I'm, I'm giving him enough credit to say, I think they were both coerced into this by DC, by the head honchos, because obviously they want to keep their jobs. Albuquerque did way fucking worse than this in his American Vampire series, yeah. which we have reviewed time and again. I just, I cannot get behind it, and I'm really sorry to see the cover go purely for its artistic endeavor and because I, I don't, I feel that the, the artist has gotten a bad rap over it. Sure, he comes out looking like the hero of the day because he's like, I don't want it on the book. But they made him do it. And no matter what they say about it, of course they're going to say, no, DC didn't make us do it because they're the ones signing the fucking paycheck. God damn it. And that's my take on the matter, guys. This is a beautiful cover. And... If you would like to have this cover, we are going to give away this fine piece right here. You get about a about 24 by 30, give or take, poster that we will mail right to you. All you got to do is answer a trivia question. And that trivia question is, we get a little Joker trivia in honor of this Joker month. What do you think? Oh, that sounds good. We have all seen... The hilarious uh, panel from the, from the Golden Age that says, Oh, man, they're all making fun of my boner. 
You ever see this one? You know what I'm yeah. talking about. The Joker's like, they're making fun of my boner. Well, I'll show them a boner. In the golden age, it meant a mistake. You made, you pulled a boner. Mm-hmm. Bonehead. Right. What issue was that from? Sweet Jesus. What issue did Joker pull a boner? Guys, we haven't done a raffle cop the contest in quite a while, so that's what we're going to do. Fill in your answer. You have to get the answer right on raffle cop. You'll find it on peachbasement.com. Put in your answer. And next week, we'll have a drawing, and we'll see who wins this nifty-ass Joker poster behind me. Here's to you, Mr. J. So, guys, what we do on this show normally is we review comic books. Normally. 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 It was overall a really good week in comics. It was. This week, we got Giant Days, number one, from Boom Studios. We got Frankenstein Underground from Dark Horse. Also from Dark Horse, we got Shaper, issue one. From DC, we got Batgirl Endgame, number one. Green Lantern's New Guardians concluded with issue 40. We got Strange Sports Stories from Vertigo. Trinity of Sin concluded with issue six. From Dynamite, we got Altered States, Doc Savage. IDW's The Fly Outbreak, number one. And from Image, we got Chrononauts. Invisible Republic, and Red One. We also have the Manhattan Projects, The Sun Beyond the Stars. And last but not least, we got Ninja Turtles 44. Uh. Man, I was holding that in the whole time. It took a while to decide this. It did. It really did. Ramon really liked Shaper. I did. I really liked Red One and Chrononauts. I, I liked those two also. But overall, I'm going to defer to the big guy and we're going to talk about Shaper. Oh, yeah. you deferring. Yeah, you like that one, right? Um, I didn't know what the hell to expect from this. I know. At but, first it starts out with like, you know, it's obviously, it's another planet, it's mm-hmm. the future, and these kids are talking about uh, these creatures called shapers, which are basically like scrolls, if yeah, you will. Yeah. Except that whatever form that they take is now like ingrained in their DNA, and mm-hmm. they they know how to transform into and that they can in the pass future. Pass it on to their children. Right. So you feel like you know the next generation shaper has all of the attributes of their parents, grandparents, and so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. But then you go three pages in, and they're playing like a Magic the Gathering game. Yeah. And then you're, they're in a high school area, so you think, oh, maybe it's, you know, normal. Yeah, I was ready to start being upset at that point. And then you turn another page and you realize this is a futuristic alien high school. Because mm-hmm. homeboy's teacher or principal is like, she looks all like kind of lizardy or yeah. whatever. Purple mm-hmm. lizardy. Yeah, but it was, it was cool. It wasn't too much. No, definitely not. Good. And um, again, I was really worried that it was going to be some kind of cheesy card game, but it's based on... I guess history uh-huh. or what's going on in real life. Kind of like if you have like some SEAL Team 6 cards or something. Sure. So, Which I, I didn't pick up on. Like I, it took me a minute to realize like this card game is actually based on, you know, real life. Like yeah. there are shapers. They're kind of le- they're legends now. Like yeah. nobody believes that they existed. And there are these people who hunt uh, shapers. Mm-hmm. And I got this one big dude in armor oh my God, and yes. shit. So he, he'll come into play a little later on. But, you know, I was starting to think, that, oh, well, maybe these are just like, like D&D characters or something. Mm-hmm. Until you realize, as the story progresses... It's real. It's all it's real. very real. And it's just, this kid, this young adolescent, um, he's reaching of age, so he's technically... It's kind of like high school graduation yeah. age, you would think. So he's trying to leave and get a job and all this other shit, but he's kind of a delinquent. Right. So he's not succeeding. So it's career day at school, and mm-hmm. all of these... You know, different occupational representatives are coming and, you know, interviewing kids and they're, you know, taking them off to do whatever kind of job. And his principal assures him, you know, somebody's coming to give you a job. Mm -hmm. And he's like, oh, but, you know, I got a pretty nasty disciplinary record. Principal's like, well, maybe it accidentally got deleted. So you're like, oh, all right. You know, cool teachers looking out for Mm -hmm. him and everything. Nobody comes. Nobody. So he goes back to his job at the grocery store talking to a giant squirrel. Yeah, that was, yeah. About basically being in this, like, SEAL Team 6-style uh, shaper hunter's uh, Which outfit. Is, 
at the end of the book, thinking back at that, it's like, oh, that's fucking weird. Uh-huh. And, well, it turns out he goes back to the school, and um, they're, they're pretty much after the principal. Mm-hmm. And it turns out she's a The shaper. whole school got attacked, blown yeah. up. Of course, because, yeah. That's hey, what happens. Why not? And it turns out, spoiler alert, she's a shaper. And she's like, I didn't want you to find out like this. Uh-huh. He's like, find out what? And she like turns into first like, uh, like a panther. Yeah. And then a dragon. Yeah. Fucking A. It was, it was And it was so good. this dude, the, the, the like superhero guy, mm-hmm. I, I forget what his name was. I don't know, but he looks like um, Egyptian god from the Yu-Gi-Oh series. Yeah, he does. Yeah. He, come, he actually shows up at the school and the dude's all, kid's all starstruck. He's like, oh man, it's you. And he did, belts him with his fucking gun, like yeah. get out of the way. And shoots the dragon down, like, you know, takes her away in his ship. So the kid's wondering what the hell is going on, and he finds, like, a video message, f- plays the message, and, spoiler alert, you find out that the per you know, he she already said earlier that the yeah. person coming to pick him up was his father, mm-hmm. who he's never known all his life. And he's like, ah, whatever, I don't believe that. Finds the video message, turns out this guy who appears to be his father is talking to the teacher, and, you know, uh, he's like, I've never known our son. So they just took your mommy. Yeah. And he does not like this much at no. all. So, he, you know, they're like, he has so much power, but he's never known any other form but this human boy. So his, his body is not going to really take to shaping too well. But they left him this weird rod thing yeah. to help him. I don't yeah, know how that's going to help any. It's, it's forthcoming. We'll see. We'll enjoy it. Good series, though. Good, yes. Like the, the whole thing is like the last page he sneaks on some kind of ship and he's like, I'm coming to help you, Mom. Aww. Pretty fucking damn good book. I, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. The possibilities I, I had are my just... doubts in the first couple of pages and it just it took off yeah. pretty quick. Really good book. So, uh, we got a quick question? Uh, yes. Uh, Elsa Nestro has a few for us. Doesn't he always? He's yes. great. God bless him. Um, Age of Apocalypse Returns, question mark. How do you feel about it, basically? I never read Age of Apocalypse. I know, I know, I know. I wasn't that into X-Men in the 90s. I'm sorry. Well, that's the point. It's Everyone out different. there is giving me a dirty look right now. You should give him a dirty look. I never read it. Well, 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 I'm looking forward to it, even though it's been really, really, really fucked around with a lot. Didn't they try to bring it back a couple of years ago, too? It's kind of, sort of, pretty much did. Wolverine takes over for Apocalypse, uh-huh. and he becomes all apocalypse ish and it's just, they went all over the place with it. So I'm hoping if they could get rid of some of that, that'd be awesome. But now, is it coming back on its own, or is it coming back purely for Secret Wars? Secret Wars, I believe. <laughs> but, you know, from there, anything's possible. Fair enough. He also wants to know our favorite Avenger. Favorite Avenger? I, I guess Cap would Thor. be mine. Yeah. Yeah. I've always, I've always liked Captain America. I've always respected the character. I mean, it's kind of in the name. He's Captain America. And that, that's a big weight to have on the shoulders of a fictional character, if you ask me. Okay. Um, his third question. Should Superman kill? No. Yes. Really? Mm-hmm. Like in general? Well, no. Uh, in... Um, certain levels of threat. Certain threats. Zod? He was forced to. If he's um, forced to... Um, then, you know, it is what it is, but... No, I mean, what are you going to do? It goes against no. the principles of the character. Listen, the Phantom Zone people break out. Uh-huh. There's some motherfuckers that are just going to keep on coming at you. Dark side, Mongol. Some of those ultra-level planet killer motherfuckers he fights, he should just whack Where do you draw the line? Otherwise, all, you know, you just keep killing all of these motherfuckers, you've got a whole bunch of Punishers running around. And as a staunch supporter of the death penalty, I have no problem with this. Mm -hmm. But I believe it goes against the core principles of the character itself. I personally think Batman should have fucking snapped the Joker's neck a long time ago. At the very least, Barbara here should have stabbed him in the dick with a batarang. She should have. If anything, when Batman's not looking, he's such a fucking left-wing liberal asshole that he fucking, he just sends people into this revolving door of justice and they're back out again. If the GCPD had any balls whatsoever, they'd bring Batman up on charges of negligent homicide. How many people are dead because Batman won't kill the Joker? Two. 100,000. <laughs> Look. How many people ate those Joker fish? 
and then laughed themselves to death. Oh, so I'll give you this answer. Should Superman kill? He Only should, under he should, the absolute most extreme circumstances. He should at least be more aggressive. He's Superman, dude. He can punch a planet in half. But he doesn't. He wasted the last possible minute. Because he's a pussy. Yes. I'll yes. give you the more aggressive thing. Okay, yeah. Um, no, what's the other book we want to review? Chrononauts Red One. Chrononauts Red One. Time travel, big boobs. Time travel, big boobs. Big, big boobs. boobs. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Red this one, is a fun book. Yes. First of all, Terry Dodson's artwork, uh-huh. damn. His wife's um, inking it. Wow. Awesome. Um, it's just, it's good shit. And it takes place in a wonderful time called um, 70s, 80s? That late 70s, 80s, yeah. oh. during the height of the Cold War. Uh-huh. Actually, like, do you get the idea that the Cold War just ended? But I mean, it's, it's going to come right back given the, the time it's era. Still, it's still the Soviet Union. Uh-huh. But it's like kind of dining down and... So, basically, there's this crazy right-wing extremist lady who is kind of like the reverend from Porky's who is yelling at the, the porn stars that they're filthy. Do you ever see Porky's? You yeah. know who I'm talking about, yes, the crazy I reverend. Porky's. I love Porky's. Yeah, you would. I knew that. Yeah. Come on. Reverend Flavel, remember the guy in the white suit? If you have no idea what I'm talking about, if you've never seen Porky's, oh my God, see Porky's. Pause this shit right now. Get on Netflix and either order the DVD if it's not available for streaming. Do that now. You will not regret it. Pete from the basement tells you so to Ramon. We give it the yeah. fucking thumbs up, seal of approval. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway. I uh, got this porn star girl, and the, mm. being, the whole release of the movie is being protested. And later on, she gets killed by this superhero. Vigilante is Running yeah. around. Called the Carpenter. Yeah. I don't know why they really call him that, but he does have these big ass nails that he drives into people. I think it's the whole religious overtone. Like the pastor is a pastor, right. and then and Jesus Christ was the carpenter, yeah, and he's uh-huh. like the savior of mankind, so he's getting rid of all the evils in the world. And, yeah. You know, we all know porn is evil and stuff like that. Porn's not obviously evil. I'm just being sarcastic for the sake of the book. So, first, you know, just let's just flip the prime meridian over mm-hmm. and we go to Russia. And the Russians are like, listen, if this guy continues, uh, this woman is going to come into political power and mm-hmm. that's not going to be good for us. It seems like the Russians kind of want a peaceful existence, mm-hmm. coexistence with the United Mutual States. Mutual disarmament yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah. And she is going to be totally against that because she's totally against commies and gays and this and that. And she is going to vote against disarming all the nuclear weapons. And then we're going to be right back in the thick of the Cold War. So... Their plan is to send their greatest Spetsnaz warrior, mm-hmm. this woman, named... Uh, what the fuck was her name? Oh, my God, I forgot. It's a, it's a Russian name, obviously. Yeah. She's hot, though. Oh, she's very, very hot. Very hot. And she's a badass. Uh-huh. Like, she's been trained since she was, like... Yo, she was bench-pressing and doing sit-ups in the air. Yes. She yeah. was crazy. Yeah, it's just... Yeah, yeah. Lola? I don't know. Look it up. I'm looking it up. Okay. I have the worst memory, guys. I swear to God, I just read this thing yesterday. I have no idea what this girl's name is. But basically, they want to send her to America under the guise of being an American, and she is going to be the new superhero. They're going to make a superhero with a false backstory, some little country girl from Alabama. That's my best southern accent under the, you know, cause of duress, because I can't... Vera Yelnikov. Vera, that was it. What did I say? Lola. You're way off. Yeah, I was a little off. I had the last letter right. Yeah, it's hot. I love Dodson's. He's so he's such a great artist, man. He is. Every every bit of it. But you know what else he does really good besides huge tits and hot women? What? Facial expressions. Yeah. He like the the look on her face, the look on the all of the other Russian like soldiers' faces when they're watching her work out and everything. Yeah, he's kind of like um, Hughes. Uh huh. That way. Yeah. yeah. Incredible women, great I, facial expressions. I actually like him better than Adam Hughes. I do. Eh. I'm not going to pick sides. They're both the good boobs. Fair enough. So they <clears throat> send her to America as this little Alabama country girl. <laughs> and they're creating a superhero called Red One. And she's in this tight spandexy outfit, which Very obviously tight. does not fit. 
course. In convenient places. Oh, she a has a, uh, a sidekick, if you will, a microchip kind of guy. Yeah. This chubby Russian guy who runs a little convenience store. Who doesn't peek while she's changing? Who do, peek he he peeked change. a little bit. He peeked. You have to peek. Yeah. Yeah. This is really just a setup. And, oh, by the way, she makes. Uh, she's now working for a porn director. Which is awesome. She gets offered the job, doesn't take it. And they're doing this. She seems to fuck a lot. She banged that dude on the plane coming in. She, in the airplane, in, um. Mile High Club, man. Yeah, no, before that, in the whole, in the bedroom when she was with those, those couples, was that a. Orgy of some kind? Yeah. I mean, yeah. She, she won't do it for a country, but she'll do it for entertainment. Yeah. Huh? So that's. Because, like, all of her superiors obviously want to bang her, but it's not going to happen. And, like, her, her handler even said that. It's like, listen, that's. You're barking up the wrong tree there. She's not going to do it. I, I thoroughly enjoyed this book. Obviously, the artwork really helped. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I want to see the dynamic of having a Russian playing a United States citizen and trying to get acclimated to a place that she's never been. Mm -hmm. I mean, imagine if we went to Russia, how the fuck would we react? It's like a Russian trying to save the world from nuclear holocaust. Which is a, Isn't that a switch yes. from every 80s movie you've ever seen, ever? And it, it's, it's a hot Russian that isn't all stiff and miserable and all about, you know, the motherland and all Russian that shit. Russian women hot. Yeah, they are hot, right but now. usually they're portrayed horribly. Yeah. I mean, look at fucking uh, Ivan Drago's girl. What's her name? Yes. Uh, Red, Sonia. Red Sonia. I can't think of her name. <laughs> Bridget Nielsen. Bridget Nielsen, right. Oh, names today. Well, guys, we've reached that point in the show. It is the end of the main section so if you want to watch the rest of it head over to peachbasement.com and you can rent this episode for 99 cents you can always buy the episode for $1.99 you get this episode and get to watch the rest of it or for three ninety nine, dollars you get the adamantium package deal which comes with all of the nonsensical behind the scenes crap that goes on all of the silliness all of the drunken antics <laughs> It was really only one sip of beer there, yeah. but yeah. Yeah. Because otherwise I would have choked and if I was inhaling, you know. Now for that $3.99, besides getting every episode that we put out every month, you get the behind the scenes stuff and you get early access. These new shows come out, uh, give or take Saturday or Sunday. And you get six weeks for the price of four. You start off, you get your two weeks for free. So like if you're just testing it out and you're not sure if you want to keep the package, which obviously you will because... We're funny, and you like us. You have questionable taste, but you like us. Yeah, it's true. It is. You get the two weeks for free. If you don't like it for whatever retarded reason, you just cancel it and you don't get charged. But if you do, you keep it six whole weeks, and then you can renew at the end of the month. <coughs> yep. So, guys, thanks for tuning in. Thanks, as always, for writing in. Hit us up, questions at peachbasement.com. Facebook.com forward slash Pete's Basement. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter. I want to thank everybody for chiming in on the whole Batgirl conspiracy thing. Mm. Uh, Steve Flack, Daniel Blank, uh, Ryan Morrow, everybody who had something to say. I try to address everything and, of course, give my own opinion on the matter. Remember, guys, if you want this nifty-ass poster behind me, what issue did Joker have a boner? That's basically the question. We'll see you next week. Our other candidate for Book of the Week this week was Chrononauts. Mm -hmm. Ah, this was fucking awesome, man. It was, it's good. It's good shit. Basically, time travel is a new mm -hmm. invention. They are testing it out, sending satellites into the past. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the <coughs> <coughs> choking and dying. That's probably my fort still. Uh, yeah, it just dried my mouth out. It just took all the oxygen and fucking moisture out of the, <laughs> out of the area. I am obviously a slob.
I'm a guy. What? No, I just don't want it next to me. <laughs>